those four colors, I had all four of those colors in my stash. Would I have been like, these are the ones? No, I probably <laughs> wouldn't have without, you know, prequel. And I have no problem <laughs> saying that I use prequel on this to come up with these co- this color combination. That's like the fun part of it. You are listening to Fussy Cutters Club podcast, a show that gives you permission to cut into the good fabric so you can make quilts you love. And now your host, who believes it's not a crime to love using novelty fabrics, Ange Wilson. Welcome. On today's episode of Fussy Cutters Club podcast, we are talking with Laura from prequilt.com. Laura is one half of the dynamic team behind prequilt. Her and her husband started it a number of years ago, and we talk about all of that. And Laura has been a really good supporter of No Angel patterns in the past, and we've partnered up to do um, some offerings around kinship and 100 days. Prequilt is my favorite online app for coloring and planning out my quilts. And today, Laura and I are going to talk about this marvelous new feature they've got about how to fussy cut in the app so that you can pre-plan your fussy cuts for when you actually sit down and start making the quilt. You can make sure that they're going to work the way that you want them to. You can audition different fussy cuts, all of the good stuff. You want to stick around to the end because Laura has graciously provided us with an exclusive 20% off code and I'm going to give you all the details at the end. Welcome, Laura. Hi, Laura. Welcome to Fussy Cutters. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Yeah, thank you for having me. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Laura, Laura is one half of Prequilt, an online app for helping you design and colour and create quilts that reflect your personality. Is that how you would describe it, Laura? I think that's a really good way to put it because I'm a little robotic about it. It's a way of visualizing your quilt ideas. Oh, see, visualizing <laughs> so, yeah. is a good word. Visualizing is a good word. But, yeah, it's it's a um, – for those of you that like to plan and don't want to fly by the seat of your pants, it's a great way to go in. And you've got pre, – pre-quilt has preloaded – quilt designs on there so you can buy a pattern from one of your favorite designers and if they've partnered with prequilt the pattern is in there so for us we partnered with you guys to do kinship and make the cut and the free block friday series so we've got heaps of patterns with you guys which is great Mm -hmm. but today we're going to talk about a new feature on prequilt for the fussy cutters out there Mm -hmm. so can you tell me a little bit about what your fussy cut feature does Yeah, so um, this was like a really amazing thing that we kind of first got a a taste of when we helped and we collaborated with you on Kinship. You know, you you had that beautiful block with the queen and it was like, oh, that's so cool. How could we do that? And there was a lot of limitations to the old prequel, but we just had some new features kind of land in October And that's when we can get really precise with how you can fussy cut not only big blocks like the queen, but also even smaller detailed blocks. You can rotate the fabric, you can nudge it pixel by pixel. So you can even do like really, I I guess I call it like, I've been calling it seamless pattern matching. That's what I call it. You know? Do you? Okay, great. Because I was like, what is, what is it? I mean, I'm, I know there's like a, there's all these technical terms and industry standards, but I didn't really know the right words to use. But so I'm, I'm glad I was on the right track. But um, it's really about like, you know, you do some really beautiful work where you take two colorways. And it's just like, it looks like it's seamless, right? Like it just yep. transitions from one to the next. And so um we wanted to have a, uh, an app that could have that level of um, detail. And so, yeah, so that's the newest feature is the newest fabric features that we have now give people the capability of being that detail oriented around their visualizing. So that's yeah. amazing. So I'm going to put some photos obviously in the show notes so people can go and check out what we're talking about today. I like calling it seamless pattern matching because it's a pun because there is a seam. you got to sew that seam. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was really a technique that I saw Elizabeth 
from the fussy cut sampler do it in her stuff and then I came up with a way that worked for me to do it because I'm my quarter inch seam at times can't be very accurate but I'll link to the tutorial for how I do it as well in the um, show notes it's become really popular and we see it a lot in 100 days 100 blocks where people use this technique to draw the viewer into the blocks and provide a point of interest with the fabric that you've got in pre-quilt do you provide fabric samples or do I have to upload my own or is it a combination of both like how do I get my fabric in there yeah, so it's a really easy way to, um, you can download the fabric swatches from the manufacturers and then really easily upload them all into prequilt. And, you know, we're trying to, um, we're trying to get to a place where we can have relationships with fabric manufacturers and we can have that all preloaded into prequilt where it's like really you can just kind of almost browse the catalog and add what you'd like. But, you know, we're still a very small company and we're, we're in the, the early phases of reaching out to, you know, companies we really enjoy and think, and we know our customers enjoy. And I think that that's a process in itself, but we, we're really hopeful that we can um, offer, you know, prequel subscribers this really, you know, again, seamless experience <laughs> of having it all available. But if it's not available in prequel, I'm, I'm speaking positively of the future. We will have those things preloaded. But if it's not, it's really easy to to go and find the the swatch online and very easily just put it into prequel. And then it's there for you to use over and over again. So yeah, and we have a lot of help guides. We're moving towards um, one of the hopes for us for early 2024 is to have a very comprehensive deep dive into prequel, like a introductory deep dive. And that will give you video tutorials on how to load the fabric swatches and how to be able to fussy cut. And so um, we'll have a video here that, you know, that Angie, you'll be able to share in your description and, and that'll give people some um, tutorials step-by-step -step on how to do that. So, yeah. yeah. And so it's really good too, because you guys have the solids library catalog as well. So I'm a big fan of fussy cutting with somewhere for your eye to rest. So I like to pair a lot of my fussy cutting with solids or tone on tone, um, something just to let the fussy cut do its thing. And so prequel makes it really easy to pick a color palette that you can work with in solids and then mix and match the fussy cutting to suit what you want to achieve, the look you're going for. I guess the question I have for you guys is where do you see fussy cutting or why is it that you've chosen fussy cutting as something that you would focus a portion of your business on because I don't know of anybody else that offers an application that allows fussy cutting in this kind of visualization tool. See, I made mm -hmm. another word up there. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yeah. Um, you know what? Actually, this is really um, where our users kind of reached out to us and said, hey, this is actually a really great feature. Can it do this? And so one example in this case is, we had known fussy cutting was a thing, you know, especially working with you and, um, you know, and, and, and the way I was thinking about fussy cutting was more of a framing, you know, like isolating a particular, you know, cute little bunny or the sailors. You had that one block, which was fantastic with these four sailors in the corner. And so that was the way that I was thinking about fussy cutting because, you know, a lot of the, of these features, um, I'm not as super familiar with because I'm not a fussy cutter myself. Yep. And so we had launched this and it was actually, um, Bobby from geeky Bobbin was like, Oh, Hey, I'm doing something with fussy cutting. I, do you think that your, that your new features will able, be able to do this precision, this kind of seamlessness? And I was like, Oh, I think so. And so that's where we kind of dove in and really tried to play with it and see if it could do it. And because we're so familiar with it, it was easier for us to, to kind of dive in and tinker with it and see if it would work. And so, um, and that's like, to be honest, like 
I am a particular quilter. I, I quilt in a certain way. And so I'm really limited by my bias in quilting, right? And so it's really through our customers and our friends like you and Bob and just anyone, actually, we get emails all the time. Can, can, is it possible to do this? And we're like, well, I never thought of that. And so, um, so that's really where a lot of our um, exploration and development comes from. Um, it's really just listening to our customers and, and our friends. And so it wasn't, I, I mean, I wish I could say, oh, yes, Angie, <laughs> I saw the writing on the wall. <laughs> like, but it totally isn't. It's not yeah. like that at all. It was really, we took a step in one direction. Somebody was like, hey, could it also do this? Or could it do this better? And we're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it. And so, um, yeah, so it wasn't as deliberate as, as hindsight would probably. <laughs> but that's good, right? Because it shows that as a company, you guys are committed to listening to your users, which a lot of companies these days don't at their peril. It also means that you guys are small enough to scale that change um, and make that organic pivot we were talking about earlier. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's one of the things I like about prequilt is that it there is that flexibility there. And I guess it's a good reminder to those that are listening that if there is something that you want to see, drop an email through and you guys will have a look at it. And if you can do it, great. If not, you might schedule it or let them know or explain a better way or an easier way of doing something. So that's a really nice feature of pre-quilt. I want to ask you a little bit, you said you're not a fussy cut quilter, which, you know, that's great because it means that there's more variety in the world. How would you describe your quilting style then? Um, you know, I think I'm really still in that toddler stage of quilting. That's a really hard question, Angie. Uh, I think, like, to be honest, I think it is really, I like to prototype ideas. And so for me, the best stage of quilting is when I'm tinkering and trying to figure out how it's going to work. So for example, I was working on a quilt. Uh, some friends gave me these um, templates. They were beautiful. I wanted to use them and I wanted to use scraps. And so I just started playing with it. And it just kind of evolves. So I honestly, I think that that's probably the type of quilter I am, which is not a category at all. But it's um, it's just like I just kind of bumble through it. It's more like improv with a birth of an idea. I I have no idea. But um, maybe in ten years I'll have a better <laughs> <laughs> categorization yeah, well of what I am. But I just um, I would definitely say I'm a modern quilter who likes to work with solids yeah so you are all about the color and the color placement and how that would you say how that color makes you feel or the response that you oh, get to those definitely. colors yeah. yeah so I guess my next question then is for a person who likes the improv and the playing and the tinkering you're like a Willy Wonka of quilting how did you come to be behind an app that allows such structure and formality in quilting? Yeah, that's a really good question because it does seem like quite the contradiction. Yeah. <laughs> so actually pre-quilt was started because I was working on um, my circus tent quilt, which was, it has like 80 different colors in it. And I was having a really hard time um, kind of visualizing that. And it's not that I needed everything placed exactly so, but I wanted to have that leap of faith that it would all work together. And so Gar actually like looked over my shoulder. He's like, I could totally do something using code that would just puke that up for you. Right. <laughs> and so that's, yeah, it totally was like, Bleh. and I mean, and that's one of the beauties of prequilt is that there's room for both that organic dynamic play. You don't have a specific thing in mind, you want to kind of play through an idea. And so we have the color randomization, we have block randomization, you can build a block without really even knowing how you're going to piece it yet, and just see what that would look like, rotate it randomly, stuff like that. And then it also is built for when you have a lot of intention. And so it kind of straddles that line between knowing what the what the heck you're doing I was gonna say an f word there but knowing what the <laughs> heck you're gonna do and just having an idea and you want to explore what that idea could look like and so 
I just I, I just finished a quilt late in 2023 that I think is a really good example of that I had this this template and I had a scrap pile that I wanted to use. And I, you know, and I wanted to know that that would work together so I could play with that idea, play with those colors, even though I might not be married to exactly like block one would be this color combination, block two would be this. But knowing that all of those things would come together in the end in something delightful um, is kind of what, how I use prequel. Yeah. And, and I think you touched on something in that too. You like to play with color and experiment and for you the fun is in the failure, so to speak. And you you once gave me a quote which I still have stuck to my computer as fail fast and fail often. And so that's really reflected in your quilting. But for a lot of us, and I would put myself in this category, the structure is where we find our happy place. And so I notice when I talk to other quilters and um, we do classes and things like that, one of the places people struggle struggle is getting a colour scheme that they think will work and will be successful for them and what they want to convey. So pre-quilt has, has inbuilt colour palettes for quilts that they've – so for the designer submits the quilt, for example, um, kinships done in the blues that are on the cover, and you allow people to select – Say you want to change fabric one in the quilt to be instead of a navy, you want it to be a hot pink. And so it will recolor just based on selecting that one fabric. So for people who kind of want to have fun but don't want to leave the safety of the shore, that's a really great feature. And I know you touched on the fabric randomization. Can you tell us a little bit more about, because that kind of all ties in, yeah, about giving them that that safety to play? Yeah, that's a really good point. Because what we have is a feature called fabric links. For anyone who's been with pre-quilt from the early days, this was, it used to be called color tags. And I mean, this is a perfect example of like a company who doesn't know they're going to become Google and <laughs> all the emails are like, Greg at Google. And you're like, crap, now we have two Gregs. And you know, and so, and then it's like Greg H. And it's like, crap, we have two Greg H's. So this is a perfect example of like a bumbling, like organic dynamic pivoting. Um, and so we used to call it color tags because we could only do solid colors. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, now Whoops. we can do fa- printed <laughs> fabrics and this is confusing. So we recently just renamed it Fabric Links. And what it is, is it's it's a buddy system. You use a fabric link to buddy up a particular fabric, which could be a solid fabric or a printed fabric and a piece of a block. And so you kind of just like take, just say you have a half square triangle block. There's two half square triangles. You buddy up you know, the left bottom one with fabric one, and then you buddy the top right one to fabric two. And then at any time you can switch out what fabric two is. It could be hot pink. You could change it to blue. Um, If you don't have any intentions yet, you can use the fabric randomizer. I mean, the color randomizer, which should actually also be called the fabric randomizer now. (laughs) we Good just got a Greg H people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, and what it'll do is it'll just select different. It's defaulted to different solid fabrics yep. and it'll just throw, it'll just puke out different color combinations. <laughs> and what I have found is I love that one. Cause I, even though I love color and I, and I have a certain bias towards it, that bias can be a strength and it can become a weakness because yep. you're, you're, cutting yourself off for maybe that puke green that (laughs) you might not have known is so beautiful with hot pink, right? And so that's what the color randomizer does. It just throws up combinations of colors. The more fabric links you have, the more dynamic and the more differences that can create. And then once you see something you like, you can become more intentional about it. Then you can lock a fabric link so that when you randomize the fabrics, it won't change that one. I'm married to this navy background fabric. I do not want that to change. And what it is is really intentionally uh, minimizing the manual labor of playing with color. There's no manual labor of clicking on everything and changing everything. One button click will change it all. Yeah. 
And so I've, I found some really wonderful com- color combinations that I definitely wouldn't have pulled together. Actually, my kinship quilt, I made the 80 block layout. And um, those four colors, I had all four of those colors in my stash. Would I have been like, these are the ones? No, I probably <laughs> wouldn't have without, you know, pre-quilt. And I have no problem <laughs> saying that I use pre-quilt on this to come up with these co- this color combination. That's like the fun part of it. And so that's why I think like, and part of this, you know, early days for me, I had a really hard time like seeing things that I couldn't see or imagining things I couldn't see. And I know I'm not the only one, you know, like how many of us have have looked at a beautiful quilt pattern and been like, I love that quilt. I don't know if I want to put in like 50, 60 hours worth of work and then find out at the end that um, that red and that... (laughs) that whatever don't work together. Right. And so that's really what, you know, pre-quilt can really just help is get you excited about something and gives you that momentum or that leap to go like, I I have faith in this. I'm going to go and make it now. Which is really good because I think uh, fabric is expensive. Time is finite and it's one of those things you'll never get back. So if you're going to choose to give up your time resource and your money resource to do something, that confidence that it's going to achieve what you want to at the end is really, I think that's where the value of pre-quilt really shines. The fussy cutting now is just an extra cherry on top. But the thing that I also think about with pre-quilt is if you're a budding quilt designer and if there's something that you've seen, a pattern, a a tile, a, a wallpaper or something out in the world and you want to see if you can make it into a quilt, Prequilt allows you the ability to design that block and then put it in a layout. And so you can go from the absolute kernel of an idea all the way through to seeing that quilt finished the way you would like to. Have you seen anyone come into Prequilt or have you had feedback from people that when they come into Prequilt, they didn't think they were a pattern designer and then at the end of it they're like, yay, I am now. Um <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I, I mean I've never heard those exact words and and this is where we can get better at getting testimonials and getting yeah but um and getting direct feedback but all, all a lot of the indirect feedback and you know through Instagram or even just seeing what people create it's just like it blows our minds because again like I think of quilts in a certain way and being able to see what people are able to produce with prequel totally differently. It's just, it's so, it's just really, it makes us really proud of what we've created, which is just a tool to help other people create what they want to create, you know? And there was one woman from the UK, like, she's great. She had, and she told us she did everything on her phone. <laughs> just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even read email on my phone and you designed this really beautiful animal quilt on your phone, you know? So I really think it has just enabled people to move quicker through an idea progression. Um, And especially for people who don't have Adobe or don't have the Adobe skills, that is, that is a, it's a, it's a very strong tool, but it can be very um, limiting if you don't understand how to use it which I totally don't. Yeah, it's a roadblock um, for people. It can be, yeah. And it's it's also a very expensive software to have. So, you know, for $7.50 a month, you can jump into prequel and play with an idea. And I've done that a lot. I'll start with a sketch. I kind of have a rough idea of a sketch. And instead of using, I'm not a very good sketcher. So instead of using pencil and graph paper, you know, for the whole quilt, I'll maybe just sketch out one block and then play with that block and see how it, you know, what scale would work really well for it. Like how many of these blocks do I want? Do I want sashing in between? Do I want yeah. more negative space? Um, and so that's really, uh, yeah, I, I think that there's been a lot of people who've been able to work quicker through the ideas. I'm not necessarily sure that pre quilt like makes the designer, I think they already had that all, like they came to the table with that already. Um, We just let them see what they, they can do. You know, Angie, we're going to be six next month. (laughs) Like, and you know, and I love the, the 
slow community that we've built, or I love the community that we've slowly built up. And I just love seeing like how many different things are on pre-quilt, how many different types of quilters there are, um, people who are hobbyists who just want to make something for themselves all the way through to really successful designers who are, you know, making a living off of it. And um, we also have a new feature where you can actually import an SVG file. So if you are a hardcore illustrator or illustrator user, and you know how to build out these really complicated like FPP blocks, you can export that as an SVG and then put it into prequel. And you don't, you know, no longer need to use the prequel interface to build the block. You can just kind of port it over or import it and then use fabric links to, to create the block. So that's exciting. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's really exciting. And it's, and again, it's like we did, we finally got that to work because we collaborated with the ladies from prequel or the elves from Quiltmas and a lot of those blocks this year were foundation paper piece blocks. And so we needed to find a way to be able to service that. And uh, yeah, and so a new feature was born. And that's how, you know, back to that organic growth. It was like, it's also like, um, what is it? Like, uh, what's the saying? Um, necessity is the... Oh, yeah. Is it necessity breeds? Oh, I can't think of it. Whatever, but yeah. whatever. We all know what that... <laughs> Yeah. We don't know what we mean, right? <laughs> the yeah. readers or the listeners can be like, duh, you idiots, it's this. But, you know, like, we need Someone's it. driving we along the highway like yelling at this, <laughs> yelling yeah. at that radio. You guys, necessity is the mother of all inventions. <laughs> that is it. That we, you got it. I mean, I'm also really bad at games like Wheel of Fortune, Wordle. <laughs> I'll just be like, there is like one letter missing and I can't figure it out. So I'm not a wordy person. I'm much Mental more note, do not have color. you on my team for charades. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll just be like, uh, geez, what is that? That's a good <laughs> They'd be like, solve this word and it's P R E. Gap U I L T, and you'd be like, "Come on, Laura!" Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, "Somebody take the wheel, take the wheel." <laughs> Can I phone a friend? Yeah, yeah. No, and there's a lot going on. So yeah, I mean that we get back to that thing of the size of your business allows for that fast and rapid change, and so I guess for me, one of the things that that I hear in that is that you and I share a similar love of seeing variations of the same thing. And it's one of the driving forces behind a hundred days, hundred blocks is I like seeing all the different variations of the blocks that come in. And it's one of the ways that I think pre-quilt really gives people a safe space to be adventurous with what they're choosing. And I think it demystifies a lot of the panic and confusion around does this work with this, you know, can I use this? Um, it's another great way of going, like you said before, I've got these 70 colours in my solids range at home. If I look through prequilt, can I find something that, some combination of using those things and how I can make those sing together? I guess my other question for you, and it's a selfish one, is what else are you going to do with prequel? What are the plans that you have coming up for prequel? Oh. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> we, well, I mean, these are just, these are intentions, right? And I mean, we would love to be able to get, I mean, well, our next feature development, um, our goals for 2024 is to get fabric requirements. Yeah. We want to take prequel beyond the visualization planning and the confidence of, seeing what you want to make to then having a tool that helps you actually make it right so that's that's it um we'd love to partner with some of the you know uh, fabric manufacturers that we you know really love and i mean pre is is i guess more biased towards modern fabrics because that's the type of quilter i am that's by no means all we we use um or you know make available but, reaching out and having things more preloaded in prequel and and not at an and not at additional cost to consumers but 
to be able to, to do that. I'd also really like to have a really, you know, like, I think one of the things which is, which is a compliment is that people think that there's a lot more people behind prequel, which, you know, that's yeah. great. Cause if we, <laughs> if we look like, like we have a team, that's amazing, but it is just Gar and I, and, um, and there's pros and cons to that. We can pivot. We, we, we're organic, you know, like back to these buzzwords. Yeah. But when, when somebody comes in being like, Hey, I'd really, is there a way for me to put an image in the background so I can trace it? Yep. Well, one of you now, has to build that. Us a week. Yeah. And Gar was able to build that in three days, you know? And, but again, like without that, without that idea being requested, we might not have ever thought of that on our own. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but we definitely want to get full blown courses. There's a lot of things that pre quilt can do that, um, that people, people don't just know need, about. Yeah. And that's partly our fault because we're like, yay, let's just send it to the internet. And then <laughs> <laughs> if we build it, they will come. But it's like, well, not if you're like, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and nobody like one person finds out about it you know like so it's it's you know we're getting better at being able to to bring people along with these things that we're creating because it's really powerful stuff we could have multiple colorways in one in one quilt you don't have to set, save like 50 variations of it they can all be like right there in that same and you just toggle through them you know just yeah. things like that so we want to, and we want to be able to bring that to people um, for free. And, you know, part of that is to help retain our customers. We, we really don't want people frustrated with it. And then they just, they just yeah. ditch it. So, and that's on us, you know, so that's, that's really our goals for 2024 is build out really robust courses that um, are on YouTube that help people use what we have and, and then get the fabric requirements in there to help people really bring that out of pre-quilt and help them make that quilt that they've just <laughs> fell in love with, you know? So, you know, cause right now we're relying a lot on people having the quilt math and the know-how. And so, yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, that's where we're headed. <laughs> that's um, the fabric requirements are a big one. And especially like we design or I design, sampler quilts and so getting fabric requirements for sampler quilts is very labor intensive and so the ability to just be able to whack it in pre-quilt and then push a button and ta-da uh, would be amazing yeah. I guess the other thing I want to know is what are your quilting plans for 2024 yeah I've, I've gotten really excited again so I had a bit of a you know we all have our on and off years or you know Decades, decades for some or of whatever. us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't gone quite a decade, but um, I really, um, there's a, so I'm a, I'm a Korean American Canadian adoptee. And I, I don't know if I fell in love with this specifically because I'm from, you know, originally Korea, but I really love Bojagi and Jokakpo, which is the the Korean wrapping cloths and the way that they piece things together. And so I really have I have so many ideas of using that technique, but in a quilt or, or, you know, pushing this idea of what, you know, how, how thick and fluffy does a quilt need to be? Could it be light and, you know, and, and not a single layer. Cause I think the definition of a quilt is pretty standard, pretty much out of three, three layers. Right. Yeah. But what could that middle layer be? And, you know, what could the back be and all these things. And so I really am excited about, doing a lot more of those ideas that I have had hanging around in, in the back of my head. And, and because, you know, like pre quilts, like moving along. And I feel like now that it's been six years, I feel more confident in what we're doing. I mean, obviously it's still always like, you know, there's always, <laughs> there's always change. There's always things that are used to work, but that don't work anymore. But I feel like that's given me a lot of I'm not as anxious around that. And so it's opened up that creative, um, creative part. I'm not yep. using all my creative energy on business and, and pre-quilt. I can use some of that on my own quilts and, and, and just kind of playing with it. You know, I, I really just, um, and, and I think also, you know, kind of to something that we were talking about earlier too, I think I'm just less afraid of 
a failure, which, you know, I, I, I went to design school and that I was in industrial design and that was like, that's the mantra in design. It's like fail fast, fail often and learn from that. And that's how you're going to get to the right solution. Um, you're not going to get to it if you like spend two years on this one iteration and then find out after two years that that was no good. Right. Yeah. So, and so I've kind of embraced that even more with my own creativity is being less married to this huge 60 by 80 or 70 by 90 quilt. Like, let's just start with a 14 by 18 one. <laughs> and see if you like that, if that's going anywhere, you know? Well, if you've and, got uh, enough of them, you could just hide under them. <laughs> I could, yeah. Just like piece those together. Why not? You know? So, yeah, I'm really excited about um, about that side of, of my life as well, because I really enjoy, and again, like what I really, and I think this is leftover from, you know, my days at, at OCAD, which is the Ontario College of Art and Design. It's like, um, it's just the prototyping and the tinkering. It's like, okay, what's the best way to make this happen? Oh, now I've hit a roadblock. There's this problem. It's like, now these colors are see-through. There's like, you know, the, like this rich pink when I put it on top of this green, it's like getting, what is it called? Like, I don't know. It's bleeding through, right? Yeah. It's tainting that pink, right? How do I stop that from being tainted? You know? And, and that's where I get really excited. Yeah. And it's, um, I think you've touched on something that I've come to understand only recently is if you are in a constant anxious fight or flight mode when it comes to your business, because as, as sole business traders, operators, whatever you want to call yourselves, everything rests on your shoulders. Whether you succeed or fail, it all comes down to you. And at times that can be overwhelming and stifling and crushing. Um, and so to be able to get to a point where your business, you can detach a little bit from that business in the sense that the failure becomes less personal. And in doing so, it allows you to concentrate on other creative pursuits, which then in turn fills your cup, as they say at my son's school, and then you can use that to go back to the business with new ideas. And you see this kind of invigoration happen, which from the sounds of it is what happened when the fussy cutting thing came along and then the quiltmas opportunity with the FPP. And so you guys are getting this fresh injection of enthusiasm for the business. And then that I strongly believe when you're enthusiastic about what you're doing, it trickles down into the users as well. And so you get this really positive cycle happening where you guys are excited, you put stuff out, then you see how people use it and that, in, you know, in turn it excites you to do more things and then they get excited about more things. And, and the world goes on to be filled with these amazing 14 by 18 inch quilts that... <laughs> Barbie quilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you got like six Barbies under it, she owns yeah. skinny, mate. <laughs> she is. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really interesting dynamic. And I think for me, fussy cutting is where I get that thing. But fussy cutting is a very slow process. And so I've, well, for me, it is, I've had to accept that maybe I'm just a patchwork block maker. I'm not a full quilt maker I do make I never quilt my own quilts because who's got time for that and so that accepting that that's okay and that's that's fine has been a really big thing and um and it's really interesting because you and I talk off off podcast quite often about business and um I knew that you were going through this season of god doesn't that sound wanky this season of um (laughs) Sorry, I've been listening to a lot of businessy podcasts lately um, <laughs> where, you know, you go through change essentially and maturing and growing and, and all of that stuff. And I'm really excited to see how that flows out into prequilt. I'm really excited to see how people use prequilt and to share the seamless pattern matching and to see how they use that to go on and do bigger and better things. Um, So I'm going to share all the links in the description and the show notes. We're going to share photos of the stuff that we've talked about and we will share tutorials on for mine how to do the seamless pattern matching and then for you how to use prequilt to get fussy cut stuff in. And 
then we expect to see everybody making beautiful quilts boldly and confidently. The other thing I'm going to share too, and we've slept on this one a little bit, is there's a discount for people if they want to sign up through the link in the show notes. And so that discount offer will be in there. I highly recommend taking advantage of it uh, because prequilt is worth the investment. And if you struggle with colour, you struggle with fussy cutting, because a lot of people don't want to cut into that fabric if they think it's going to look dodgy. Well, especially because a lot of it is like out of print and it might be your favourite. And if you're trying to get like that flower and there's only maybe four or five of them on that only fat quarter you have, like, yeah, it can be. I have a lot of fabric that I'm (laughs) still too afraid to cut into, but I feel myself getting braver and braver. And, and like you were saying before, I think that because I'm not as anxious anymore, that has come with like just the maturity of the business. Like, you know, like this is our sixth year, having more faith in the ups and downs and, and, you know, and just knowing that, if we continue to kind of do what we feel is right, then we'll still find a place here in the business, you know? And yeah. I think, have you seen the movie Air? Um, oh, yeah, the Michael about, Jordan shoes. Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. I saw it on, I think, Amazon, but is it now on Netflix as well? You can find it on iTunes. I think I saw it on Amazon as well because we, we, we did a month of Prime for Christmas. Anyway... But there's this quote in there that if you do the right thing, the money will always follow, right? And it's not like, you know, the, our only motivation is money, but... You got to pay your bills. You know, when you're running a business, you kind of yeah. need some of it. The kids but it's just, it's, want to be fed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They might want some food, you know, yeah. like three times a day, not just once a day. But, um, yeah. but it just, it just kind of like, you know, and that, and so now we're thinking more about those things. Like what, what is the right thing? What, which direction do we want to go in? Like there's so many ways to, to be a part of this community, how, you know, like how do we want to show up, you know? And, and I think that, you know, little by little, we're developing that sense. It's like, we want to be a tool that enables people to show up in the way that they want to show up. So how do we do that? And, um, and I think we've been so fortunate, like we got a lucky break really early on where, where we had an interview on a, or we had an article on, um, Oh my God, I, I'm totally mom braining it right now. <laughs> At 2 a.m. you'll go, ah, it was this. Yeah, I'll be like, ah, <laughs> you know, but it was, it was uh, the craft industry. We had a, um, we had a, an article and, and we just, we got really lucky and, and we just keep showing up and, and make new friends and collaborate and you, you know, and we were really like, you were one of our really early collaborators that just really helped put us on the map. And, you know, we're just so grateful for that. And yeah, but that's because you so guys were doing the hard this. work. Like you, well, you were doing the hard work. If you didn't have, cause I know this sounds funny. There is no such thing as luck. For me, in my world, there is no such a thing as luck. But I think you were doing the hard work. You were making a product that was really robust and actually addressed a need in the community. You gave people what they needed at a time when they needed it and you were open to collaboration, which a lot of people when they're first starting out in business are really protectionist about their stuff and and don't want to collaborate for fear of losing control of it or or something nasty happening. And so to collaborate early on and be open to those opportunities because they bring a different type of failure with them as well, you guys really were there when you needed to be there, if that makes sense. And so, you know, you've done a lot of this stuff. And Abby of Craft Industry Alliance wouldn't have interviewed you guys if you weren't doing something worthy. So I don't think it's luck. I think you did the work and you turned up and that's why it happened. But, yes, if you want to call it luck. <laughs> but I, mean, no. it's, it's a, I mean, we continue to show up, but I, I do. I feel I find it like we're very grateful that you took – you know, you trusted us with your hard work, right? And then we were able to run with that and really collaborate in a really great way to hopefully bring something of value to this thing that you've, you know, you've birthed. And so I guess in a way, that's what I kind of call luck is like, we get lucky that people 
you know, collaborate yeah. and trust us. And we get lucky that people like send us this great feedback that are yeah. like, oh my God, why didn't we think about that? Or, but it's you're the- right, this could fussy cut a lot of cool <laughs> shit. You know? It's like, the stuff on the, the flip side though, because I feel really grateful that you guys took a chance with me and with my patterns and with this crazy event that we had because there was no way for us to metric measure you know, what it would get in return for you guys. So it was really a leap of faith for you. And so I was really thankful for that. I'm really thankful that you are open to feedback and and, um, collaboration with your community and stuff like that because the fussy cutting tool, as a fussy cutting advocate, I'm really happy that there's something out there that exists that lets people play before committing to cutting their fabric because, as you said, if you've only got like a fat quarter and you only get three repeats of that motif on that fat quarter pre-quilt allows you to go in and go all right where can I place this fussy cut where I'm going to get the maximum bang for my buck out of those three things and how do I balance that so there's no other part of the quilt competing with those valuable three motifs and a lot of people talk to me about waste with fussy cutting how do you deal with the waste which is a whole nother thing, but pre-quilt helps eliminate some of that wastage as well because you know exactly which bits of the fabric you're going to use and so you can optimise because take it from me, there is nothing worse than cutting something and then going, oh, that's that would have worked better in the other spot or I'm half an inch short, what did I do? So all of that stuff is taken out of the worry for people and for me like with 100 days I love sampler quilts I'm a big I get bored really easy doing the same thing over and over again so sampler quilts allow me to have fun and test my skill set and all those sorts of things and I see every year when we do 100 days people are so scared at the start of it to cut the fabric and then at the end of it they're like I'm so glad I cut the fabric. And so you're like, yep. And now I've got a tool where I can go to people, if you're worried about cutting said fabric, go whack it in pre-quilt, have a look, trust your instincts around that fabric and take the dive. And so um, I'm really excited. And we're going to have like all the links to 100 Days where you can use pre-quilt with Kinship, you can use pre-quilt with Make the Cut and this new fussy cutting tool so you can maximise your blocks for maximum achievement, no, achievement, impact. Oh, so many words. But, yes, so thank you, Laura, (laughs) for coming today. Thank you for being one of my first guests. I look forward to interviewing you again on my 100th podcast episode. that would be awesome. (laughs) I know. Imagine pre-quilt will be like 23. No. (laughs) It's like, well, it's just like looking at the pedometer, like turnover. Like we're, we'll just be sitting there being like, eh, yes. Yeah, a hundred. It's like one of those things. When you first started in business, do you think if someone had said to you, this is what it's going to look like, you would have gone, yeah, I'll take that journey? Or do you think you would have gone, eh, I'll stay in industrial well, design? Well, I I never actually even ended up in industrial design, but here's the thing is like, this is the great thing about having a business partner who's so different from you, right? So Gar is the dreamer. He's the dreamer and just like, I'm just diving off, see ya. (laughs) And he's like, gone, right? And, and, And I am so much more cautious than him. And so this is where we balance ourselves out because I don't think alone I would have taken such a big risk, dived off some cliff and hope that there is enough water below me, right? Um, And so knowing now what I know now, yes, because I really love it. The only thing I don't like is, you know, I don't think that I talk to people enough. (laughs) Like I'm very social and like working out of my home with my husband as my <laughs> colleague is like, I'm playing too many roles here. You're like my husband, we co-parent, we work together. Like, everything is with you, you know? So I miss that aspect, but I do, I really, I really love like working on something. I've really, and again, I think that's the maturity. I'm less scared. We're, we've been around for six years. And so that I think the scariest part are probably the first three where you're not really quite sure if you can still 
hang on till till they you know, you've built enough of it, but you're you only have a few people here, you know. And so I think, and it's it's we're still growing. We're still very small. We're you know we're still very small. But I look forward to being at QuiltCon. We have this will be our second time with a booth at QuiltCon, and I just. I feel like every year I, I, I meet a few more people. I make a couple more friends. We make a few more collaborations um, that, you know, are really like us helping, not just taking. And that makes me more excited for the future. And, and you know, I'm all honestly, I'm just like, I can't wait to see you. And let's have at least <laughs> one dinner and two coffees and, like you know, geek out and talk about things. And, and, and that's the part that I really love is just being a part of this community in a very small way, but I've met so many great people through that, which I don't think I would have, you know, been able to, to, to do only on my own. So, and, and so I'm very grateful that Gar is just like, I'm running, see you at the bottom. You know? <laughs> but do you see, it's really funny because Gar took the risk and built you the, planner, strategist needs that confidence and reassurance to do something, a tool that would give you that as a quilter. So Mm -hmm. it's really funny to see how the, not funny, ha, but you know, it's, I always love how life throws those kind of combinations where the risk taker built you something that limits the amount of risk. Yeah. 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 It's so cool. It's great. But yes. We really complement each other in a lot of ways because he's he's actually quite introverted and and so you know like he's like the developer through and through. It's like <laughs> great. And he'll be like, I don't understand this email. Can you translate it for me? And I'll be like, Oh yeah, you know they, this this and this. And he's like, Okay. And then he'll build it and he'll you know. So it's like I can frame up the thing and he'll build it, you know, or build on top of it, and then and then we just add to it and and so. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really excited for the future. I think I think that there's just so much runway, but I also I also know that it, it, to do it well, it's going to take time. And I think that's the thing. It's like I'm less anxious about getting there quickly because it's more important to get there well yeah. and make sure people are not frustrated with it. So, we we have worked a lot on managing expectations on how much we can get done. And, yeah, managing expectations just crosses so many things. But you touched on uh, you're going to be in QuiltCon and that's in February. So people can come and see you. But, like, you can talk about things if there's questions you want to ask, if there's ideas you've got, if you want to see it in practice. um, Mm -hmm. Go see Laura. And if you're really lucky, she might have a 14 by 18 quilt with her so you can see. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to have a game and the game is really there. It's like you can build a block. So it's like yeah. kind of like a puzzle game. And, you know, the hidden strategy there is to show people how easy it is. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it is like you can win some prizes. And if you're also not going to be there um, and you're a part of a guild, we do free demos um, remotely. So if you are, if your guild is interested, we can zoom into your guild and not we, I do it. Um, I'll <laughs> zoom into your guild and give a demo of the various use cases that, you know, and maybe in there somewhere in there, there'll be a, a feature or two that would, you would see would add value to your quilting practice. So, yeah. yeah. And it, it is really worth seeing in operation. Like mm-hmm. once you see it, it just starts those thought processes going and the different things you can do. And and like I said, it's a big one for those that are struggling with colour choice and fabric choice. This is a really risk-free way of trying those things. Um, so highly recommend that. But thank you, Laura. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your collaboration. Thank you for being so awesome. Um, and we will see you at episode 100. Yes, can't wait. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fussy Cutters podcast with Laura from Prequilt. As I said at the start, Laura has generously shared with us a exclusive code for you to save 20% off your Prequilt membership. All you have to do is enter the code SOCIETY when you purchase an annual basic or market plan membership with Prequilt.com. All the details are in the show notes. I can't wait to see you on there and see what you do with it. 
Thanks for listening to the Fussy Cutters podcast. Enjoyed listening? Why not subscribe so you'll never miss an episode? Did you know the quickest way to the heart of any podcaster is to leave a review or recommend the podcast to a friend? It's true. It is. Until next week, get out there and fondle that fabric. Thank you.